Good morning. I'd like to call to order uh, the Public Improvement Commission hearing of February 14th, 2019. Our first item of the hearing minutes. Upon request by the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on January 31st, 2019. I'll make Any a motion to approve the minutes from January 31st, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Moving on to the public hearing continued. Our first item is on a petition by Verizon New England Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. The locations are Kilmarnock Street, south of Boylston Street, generally at address number 33, and Boylston Street, east of Kilmarnock Street. This was new business on January 17, 2019, had its first public hearing on January 31, 2019. And this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan Boylston Street at Kilmarnock Street, Back Bay, one sheet dated July 20th, 2018. Good morning. Nicholas Wazen, Verizon representative. Uh, Verizon would like to withdraw their petition. We are able to dig on the private property after all, and thank you for your time. Great. Nicholas, thank you for your, uh, your work on that. Um, I entertain a motion to uh, withdraw without credit. Without Make credit. a motion to uh, withdraw item PHC1 from the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our second item. Uh, on a joint petition by Trinity Stewart LLC and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Boston proper, vertically above the grades of the sidewalks. The locations are Trinity Place on its eastly side at address number 40, south of Stewart Street, and Stewart Street on its southerly side, east of Trinity Place. This was new business on January 17, 2019. Had its first public hearing on January 31st, 2019. And this has shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Vertical, Trinity Place, and Stewart Street, Boston Proper, one sheet, dated January 24th, 2019. Uh, good morning. Uh, Joseph Sheridan from Goulson and Stores, here with Rick Latini uh, from Howard Stein Hudson, the engineer for the project. Um, at our last hearing, uh, we were continued and we received some comments. Uh, that uh, the commission would like to see the area of discontinuance C, the northern extent pulled back so that it does not extend more than two thirds beyond the width of the sidewalk. We went with PIC staff and with the BPDA uh, determined that we're able to make that change and so we've submitted revised plans um, pulling it back so we meet the two thirds rule and uh, we're seeking approval of those uh, revised uh, discontinuance plans today. Appreciate the effort. Rick, I don't know if there's anything going no, on. No, go on, Rick I don't know if you have one specifics or not. We, we were here, um, if you remember before, the canopy, the most furthest extent was one and a half feet from the curb line. We've pushed it, so now it's five feet. So um, in, it, uh, in response to you, we wanted us to have the overhang be only two thirds of the sidewalk. So basically, it extends at the worst spot 11 feet over a 16 and a half foot wide sidewalk. So okay. any questions or comments? No. Amir Todd? Okay. Members of the public? All right, thank you guys for your uh, uh, work on that. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make, Make a motion. A motion to uh, approve the joint petition by Trinity Stewart LLC and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for a vertical discontinuance of a portion of the following public ways in Boston proper, vertically above the grades of the sidewalk, as read into the record by the chair, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston, Public Works Department Engineering Division, discontinuance plan, vertical. Trinity Place in Stewart Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated January 21st, 4th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next item is on a petition by Trinity Stewart LLC uh, for the vertical discontinuance of a portion of Trinity Place, a public way in Boston Proper, located on its easterly side at address number 40, south of Stewart Street, vertically above the grade of the sidewalk. This was new business on January 17th, 2019. It set its first public hearing on uh, January 31st, 2019. And this has shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Vertical Trinity Place, Boston Proper, one sheet, dated January 24th, 2019. Uh, so this is the you know same project, um, just another discontinuance portion uh, along Trinity uh, Place. Yeah, just to let you know, this this is the one we're discontinuing easement, so it's no not right. co-petition with BPDA. Right. And there was no issues, I don't believe, on the new business or public hearing. So, right. correct me wrong, we had continued this just so that these two actions could go together. This is already you know, sort of two thirds or less than. That's right. Two thirds less than. Right. Other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? Yep. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. I'll make a motion to approve petition by Trinity Stewart LLC for a vertical discontinuance in Trinity Place, as written to the record by the chair, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan Vertical Trinity Place Boston Proper, one sheet dated January 24, 2019. 
Second. Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our fourth, a fourth item of uh, public hearing continued is on a petition by Celco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless for a grant of location with lead company status to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow and electrical infrastructure within the following public ways in Brighton. Locations are Western Avenue, generally between Mackin Street and Richardson Street. Western Avenue, generally at or to the west of Telford Street. Commonwealth Avenue, generally between Chestnut Hill Ave and South Street. This was new business on January 17th, 2019, and had its first public hearing on January 31st, 2019. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Verizon Fiber, Boston Mass, Western Ave, ComAve, two sheets dated January Let's move quick. Uh, so um, we we are here on a um, on a conduit run on Hamden Street, and uh, oh, you're on you're on that. Sorry, I'm very sorry. Western Avenue and Commonwealth Avenue. That's right. Um, you you had sent us Todd had sent us an email yesterday concerning some participation by. AT and T in this, which yep. which is fine. We're just unclear what they want exactly, um, so we don't have we don't have those details. I think we're ready on the other two um, for the, um, the and, and we've we've notified everyone for the issue that you left us with the last time, which was whether there was a shorter conduit run on the Brighton uh, site on the on the Commonwealth Avenue site. John has investigated that. He can address that. It's not. It's not. We, we we got to go from that manhole. So. The only pathway across to that side of Commonwealth Ave is from a manhole on the opposite side of the tracks. So that's existing already, and that's the path that we got to take to that Verizon manhole. There's nothing else all the way down. It's, the, it's actually the shortest run to that point. So I think we can actually approve all of these, and if there's a participant, we can follow up with them to get in, in the, yep. the final. It would just be a change from whether you're micro trenching or something else, right? And we don't even know if, that, if we might still be able to stay in a micro trench, um, but we'll figure it out. And, um, if we're for participations. We'll yes, exactly. It was it was late info. We just yeah. got it last yeah. night. So no, I appreciate that, and obviously we appreciate the sort of reduction in digs in general. So co-participation is always something which we we do a little more. So okay. Other questions or comments on uh, either the Western Ave or Com Ave projects? Amy or Todd? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Celco Partnership doing business at Verizon Wireless for a grant of location as read into the record by the chair and is shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Verizon Fiber, Boston Mass, Western Ave, Commonwealth Ave, two sheets dated January 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Moving on to the public hearing portion. First item is on a set of petitions by the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within portions of the following public ways in Boston proper. The locations are Marginal Road at the northeasterly corner of its intersection with Washington Street and Broadway at the northeasterly corner of the intersection of Marginal Road and Washington Street. This was new business on January 17, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Marginal Road, Broadway, Boston Proper, two sheets said January 2019. Good morning. Janet Carlson and Mallory Toomey from the Boston Planning and Development Agency. We're here to request a postponement. We are still working on the Boston Water and Sewer easement, as well as some other items with the city and with the uh, release of an easement with the uh, MBTA. And I need more time. I need four weeks if we can. Have it. Uh, any questions or comments on the request for the continuance? No, I, I <laughs> called this morning. It's in the mail. <laughs> Amy, your top members of the public. All right. uh, I have a motion to continue this item in, for four weeks until the March 14th PIC meeting. I'll make a motion to continue um, item PH1, uh, public hearing one, for four weeks, two meetings. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our second public hearing item is on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, wells, new and relocated street trees, landscaping, bioretention infrastructure, irrigation infrastructure, speed humps, bollards, and driveway curb cuts. The locations are New England Avenue uh, between Norfolk Street, Woodrow Avenue, and Talbot Avenue. Uh, Southern Avenue at New England Avenue, Colonial Avenue at New England Avenue, Mallard Avenue at New England Avenue. This was new business on January 31st, 2019. And this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, New England Avenue, Dorchester, 15 sheets, dated January 25th, 2019. Zach. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, Zach Wasma from Boston Public Works Department. I'm joined here with uh, Steve Farr and uh, Fred Barry from Niche Engineering. Um, as we presented at New Business, uh, we have plans for the reconstruction of New England Avenue that includes uh, some green infrastructure elements as well as um, some permanent improvements for traffic calming that were implemented um, by the neighborhood slow streets effort uh, from, our, from the Transportation Department. Um, I'll just hand it over to uh, Steve to go over some of the specifics. Good morning. Thank you, Steve yeah. Farr, Niche Engineering. Thank you, Zach. Yep. Yeah. So uh, just a fresh break from last time. Uh, this is New England Ave. This is uh, Norfolk and Woodrow Ave. Uh, there's actually an FTA Fairmont line is up here. And this portion of New England Ave is a one-way away from uh, Tal, away from Norfolk. Uh, we're going to reconstruct this section. Uh, new curbing, a new sidewalk only on the on the easterly side. Uh, when you get to the intersection of Southern, we're going to have some, some of those traffic calming measures. Uh, Zach said we're going to bump out the curbing. We're going to extenuate the curbing here to again tee off New England Ave, where it's today kind of close through. That will be a stop uh, on all directions. And, and these bump outs will become uh, fire retention areas for stormwater mitigation. Uh, the next portion of New England Ave, we will again continue to reconstruct the roadway and the sidewalks. Um, there is a little bump out here to create sort of a chicane for again some more street calming. Uh, there are going to be two raised uh, speed humps, one in this location uh, and then one uh, on the other side of the next sheet. Uh, again, for more traffic calming. There is no sidewalk on the western side, and that will be a by retention swale, if you will, and that, that's adjacent to the, the uh, MBTA right away. As we continue to the north, New England Ave comes in and intersects with Talbot Ave. Um, in this area here, we're going to just mill and overlay. Uh, there, this is a more developed area here where buildings are right up to the back of the sidewalk, so there's really no uh, ability for stormwater filtration you know, or traffic coming out of the the race speed up that I mentioned before right here. Um, and I think that they saw the last time we were here, we were asked to <coughs> inspect a sewer manhole that was going to be in that fire retention area there. We have done that. We are going to call that on the plans to be uh, rehabilitated, which means lined, cleaned out and lined. We got the specification from the Boston Water Sewer Commission and we incorporated that into the plans and the specs. Quick question, I see you for a couple of From uh, on uh, New England Ave, uh, where does the sidewalk, and how, how far north does the sidewalk end, uh, go on the west side? Well, uh, actually, this parcel right here at the corner of Woodrow and New England Ave okay. is a city-owned parcel, and we are going to be coming before the PIC to petition for a widening relocation of the street layout yeah. to incorporate this parcel as a formal part of New England Ave. There's going to be a little pocket park that uh, really is a national grid will be yeah. in that area. They'll be coming in the future to talk about that. So yeah. the sidewalk is going to wrap around here and go up to the limits of that parcel, and there'll be a couple of bollards there to stop people if there's visually impaired people that need a signal if there's, if there's no sidewalk here. So there's no sidewalk, just a, a small concrete strip, if you will, behind the curb, but not a formal sidewalk. And then on the, the northerly side, the sidewalk comes down around here and stops at this location here where there is a, a pedestrian ramp for a mid block crossing. Okay. So we don't think we need one that we don't need a mid block crossing to the south of Southern Ave on Denver Ave because we think that people are going to be crossing uh, further south of Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's no sidewalk on this side, so right. there's really no reason to cross here. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? 
Zach, could you pass uh, my message along to Mr. Flory? Will do. Thanks. Absolutely. Hey, you're done. Good. Members of the public. All right. Nice uh, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs as read into the record by the chair and is shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, and New England Avenue, Dorchester, 15 sheets, dated January 25th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to new business, our first item is Bowker Street, Merrimack Street, New Chardon Street, Boston Proper, Highway Discontinuance, Vertical Discontinuances, Earth Retention License, on a set of joint petitions by Bullfinch uh, Unit A Owner LLC, Bullfinch WPB1 Parent LLC, Bullfinch Congress Holdings LLC, and Bullfinch Unit A Mezzanine LLC. Have me, John Hurley from the HY Investment Group. I'm joined by uh, a few members of the team. Welcome to join Mike Flannery of Goulston and Stores, uh, John Long of uh, Haley and Aldrich, and Howard Mosher of VHB, and uh, Tom O'Brien, who uh, is usually here uh, to present. Uh, I think he's moments away, but uh, just in the interest of time and moving the schedule along, I thought I would step in and do my best impression and talk to the various actions. So. I'm um, here today to talk about uh, a series of actions that we're taking um, to, with our Bullfinch Crossing project, formerly known as the Government Center Garage uh, redevelopment, uh, specifically the second phase, which is the office tower phase. I don't know, before I dive into the um, actions themselves, if it made sense to do a quick overview of where we are and what's next, if that's helpful. So um, usually the Vanna White to Tom's Pat Sajak, so I'll have to play both roles here. So. Um, so as of right now, so this is the sort of project in the final condition. Uh, right now, this project here, which we you know put an address on it, 100, 110 Sudbury is the first residential tower. Many of you are familiar with it. You've seen it here. Uh, that is underway right now. The building is coming up out of the ground. It is, um, you know, the, the, the building's rising up. It's probably 12 or 14 stories up at this point. That building will deliver. Uh, about 18 months from now, actually a little less than that, about 15 months from now, middle part of uh, 2020. So that's that first phase. Uh, really what we're here to focus on, is the, the, the actions today are focused on this project here, which is um, called One Congress, uh, WPB2, West Parcel Building 2. That's a million square foot uh, office building designed by Kelly Clark Kelly. Our plan is, uh, we're, uh, and we've worked with many of you on this, we, you know, filed our BWSC site plan, we've gone back and forth on comments, we worked with uh, BTD and uh, back and forth on the CMP plan for a lot of the prep work that we need to make this pad prep ready, and then we'll be back in front with uh, a series of other, you know, as needed with things like the TAPA and uh, additional CMP for the tower itself, sort of on a go forward basis. So uh, that is on a path right now, and the idea is we will be days away from filing for a foundation permit, which we'll file later this week, and uh, shortly thereafter we will file for the full building permit. And then just to kind of round it out, uh, the rest of the project, this West Parcel Building 3 on 200 Sudbury Street is the second residential tower that sort of wraps the rest of the uh, West Parcel, mm -hmm. and that sort of sits on top of and around the remaining existing garage, and uh, the remainder of the parcel here on the east, the, the, this east parcel here, the last of the development, three other, three other buildings, a small uh, hotel condo building, about 157 feet, uh, boutique office building, about 150 uh, feet tall, which we used on the Greenway, and it's sort of a flagship iconic detail building that runs out the overall multi-trust development. Hello, Tom. 
Everybody, I'm sorry. We're late. You guys are moving at a faster pace yeah. than we thought, so sorry. Gino, Gino walks slow. <laughs> Did John do okay without us? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and again, just to kind of, so that's sort of the, the overall project. And again, the, the reason that we're here today uh, is to talk about uh, you know, actions tied to this building here, again, which is this one Congress office tower, or WPB2, as it's more affectionately called, in house with us. Um, which we are excited to kind of kickstart and move along on, um, in part because it moved the project forward, uh, but it also leads to the demolition of the garage over that Congress Merrimack Street, which we you know will be a ton of coordination going on with many of you, especially you, Ed, um, and, um, and you know, unlocks the opportunity to build out the rest of the site. So before I get into the actions, I'll pause there to see if there's anything that's worthy of adding, but I think that's a pretty and also, great great many questions you have just in terms of what's going on with the project. So, how, how many stories is this building? Yes, yeah, so this is 528 feet tall, it's 43 stories. As you can see here, we have State Street, uh, the name at the top. State Street is uh, committed to being the anchor tenant in this building. They're moving their world headquarters to this building, which we're very excited about. Um, so, they're going to take floors, you know, basically up to floor 27. Uh, and then the balance, floors 28 to 43, is we're in the process of identifying other tenants in the market lease the rest of the building up, but 43 stories all in. The only thing I would add is, you know, that garage has been an ugly eyesore in downtown Boston since the day it was built. Mm -hmm. So this next process is akin to ripping the Band-Aid off of, you know, something, but that's yeah. essentially what we're going to try and do. And we'll work in close coordination with all of you to try and make sure it gets done well. Should we go through the yeah, actions? Sure, the actions? So the actions, I think, are pretty straightforward. Um, the the first of these, okay. The first of these is a highway discontinuance uh, on the Bowker Street side of the site, which uh, John just kind of oriented you to to Bowker Street. It's a relatively minor piece, but it does allow for a three-inch metal uh, panel along the face of the the building, the face of the garage, uh, to be created along with the six-inch horizontal fins that are part of the the design of that building. The total discontinuance area for that piece is 126 square feet, 126 square feet. Should I keep going? Should I go through all of them? Is that? So any questions on the back of the Okay. That's the, uh, that's the highway discontinuance. Then there's the vertical discontinuance also along Bowker Street. Um, that also allows for three inch metal panel, same three inch metal panel along the face of the building and the face of the garage with the six inch horizontal fins. That too is a, discon uh, is a uh, discontinuance, I'm sorry, of 100, and, um, I'm sorry, from 35 feet to 149 feet for a total discontinuance area of 84 square feet. That's the second one. The third piece is a vertical discontinuance along New Chardon Street, which John will show you, right, along New Chardon Street. Um, that too allows for the architectural fins and the kind of the, the building swoop along New Chardon. Um, that could, uh, discontinuance occurs from elevation 62 feet to elevation 152.3 feet, uh, and the total area of that discontinuance is 28 square feet. And then the fourth of these is a vertical discontinuance along Merrimack Street. Um, so as the building started, starts to make the turn um, toward Congress, uh, that too has to do with the building's skin and the architectural fins. Uh, the uh, discontinuance occurs uh, at elevation 177.3 feet, uh, all the way up to 550.4 to allow for the fin at the top of the building. The highest occupied floor is 528, but the fin goes to 550.4. Um, the total discontinuance area for that is eight square feet. So, um, you know, we're really excited to, to be here. Obviously, the one key thing that John may have, have mentioned, um, which I think all of you know well, is this is kind of one piece of a overall transaction that will allow us to exchange and give back to the public uh, uh, a very large amount of, of public way. It includes uh, Congress Street, the portion of Congress Street, <coughs> other uh, sidewalks, all those pedestrian improvements. So we will be giving back more square footage to the public than we are asking for the public to uh, accommodate to us for this project. Yeah. As we've been going through the phases, we're just kind of keeping a balance of what we're giving Perfect. them versus what they're going to give us so that we'll have a, a kind of net at the end of it. Uh, but it's going to be positive in terms of what the city has expected. So we're doing a sort of on a square footage basis rather right, than a appraisal basis. Rather than selling up at the end of each 28 square foot discontinuance, we're, um, we're going to take it. Could you walk me through a timeline? You know, when does the garage come down? 
sure. When is construction starting? Yes, yeah, so we have, we have some, uh, a pretty decent timeline run. So I'll start as John's lining up these these boards just to kind of give you a sense of it. Um, we started, uh, we, actually, we actually started this process in 2012 and then got the permits in place in 2013. Uh, but we have a, a, a time on here that will show you what we're doing as we go forward. Um, we are, the first piece is remember that we have the residential building underway on the corner that's closest to where the, um, uh, let me hold it, let me hold it. Yeah. There. Okay, great. So in, in 2018, at the end of 2018, we've actually accomplished more along 100 to 110 Sudbury. But with the completion of uh, the work that, that uh, the Transportation Department has allowed us to do, we'll also begin the demolition of that, the rounded exit piece that, that people have known so well. So uh, you'll see a, a protective covering go up over Bowker Street in the next uh, two weeks, and then that will begin around the end of February, that, the demolition of that piece. So that's 2018. 2019, you'll see us uh, get nearly topped off on the residential tower and the beginning of the core start to come out of the ground of the office tower. Uh, that will, you know, involve all the different work that we need to do in terms of uh, uh, assembling pieces inside the garage and, and making some changes inside the garage, including the re-ramping and the opening up of the Bowker Street entrance. Go ahead, John. In 2020, <clears throat> we deliver the residential building, so that will be completed. Uh, that's 55 condos on the top of that building, 368 apartment units on the, on the rest of it. Um, we think it will be one of the best residential buildings in Boston. We're really excited about it. And you also see the superstructure start to emerge of one Congress as that starts to come up as well. In 2021, um, you'll see even more of the superstructure of one Congress come down. And this is the big year in which we'll um, you know, be taking the garage down. Um, please remember that the garage is a, is a, a structured disassemblement of the garage. It's not, it's, nobody's taking a wrecking ball and swinging it at this thing. This is a, this is a very planned, structured uh, removal of, of each of the members. For the most part, the members will be crushed on site and then used, uh, reused somewhere else. Um, so as, as why is it at this phase that, that that section of the government center garage has to be removed? We need, we're trying to strike the balance. We need it to be completed. The demolition needs to be completed before we can seek an occupancy, occupancy permit for the office tower. So we need it to be completed in time for that. And in addition to that, we want to put it off for as long as we can because inside the garage, as we maneuver to start one Congress and finish the residential building, we need those parking spaces to move parkers to that end of the garage as we complete the pieces of the garage that allow us to make the garage fully functioning from when it will be in its completed form on so, the west side. So you're telling me that the demolition is tied in the CO of the building? Correct. The, the office tower, when we uh, completed the permits with the BPDA, sort of the, the, the main public exchange that we had was the, the BPDA allowed us to have the FAR for these buildings in exchange for removing the eyesore of that garage over Congress Street, which we're more than happy to do. I know, not easy. But it, it creates this east parcel, right? So it's, it makes, you know, it makes something really special on that side. So then that gets us to 2022. In 2022, then, we will be in position to start to build out there's a small office building that John will show there on that side, which will allow us to bring the buses back. So that, as you know, we'll have to temporarily relocate the buses out of Haymarket Station. We're working with you guys to try and figure out how that's going to go. We'd like to bring those buses back as quickly as we can. So in 2022, we can start the construction of that building. Then when we get to 2023, uh, John, then um, we'll be in a position where we're starting to complete that building and also completing 200 Sudbury Street on the other side. So that will um, ring the garage. So the garage starts to disappear from view. Uh, and also 2023 will be the completion of one Congress and State Street will move in on January 1 of, uh, begin moving in on January 1 of uh, 2023. So that those two large buildings on the West Parcel will be fully complete and occupied. So then we get to 2024, <clears throat> and at that point we'll, we'll have completed the boutique office building, which means we can move the buses back in there and have a, an updated and you know, brand new bus station for uh, the 111 bus and the other buses that, that come to Haymarket on that station. Um, then we'll be able to complete uh, 200 Sudbury Street, which is the residential building that, again, rings the garage, and also uh, take on the hotel condo, which is the 200 key hotel and uh, condo project there. 2025 is completing that residential project at, at 200 Sudbury Street, and then as we head into two, 200, uh, 2026, then we're completing the hotel and the condo uh, piece there. So it makes for a, a, ch a totally changed area for Boston, um, which I think most Bostonians, it's funny when you see these pictures, it's hard for people to get a feel for it until it actually starts to appear. So. Awesome. Worth it too. <clears throat> 
Yeah, yeah so the, this is the, the, at the, end of the day, the remember at the end of the day, you know, uh, the, the biggest change for people is this parcel gets created, which is this is where the MBTA station is today on Haymarket. That parcel becomes a, a you know, shopping area and, and a place that then connects on Canal Street all the way down to what Boston Properties is doing at, at TD Garden. Yeah. So Canal Street becomes, you know, bookended by two great retail shops, spots at, at each end and, you know, presumably becomes a very different place. So we're excited. We're really excited. It's, there's a lot of challenges. Um, we recognize that we need to work in close partnership with all of you to make all this work well. Uh, and uh, but we're looking forward to doing that. So we have a lot of questions about Canal Street. More ahead, downtown north is very interesting. We're very interested. Yeah. What, what does that new connection really look like between these we two? Agree. We've worked very closely with downtown north, you know, since for a long time. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we find that we get really great comments from people. As you know, downtown north is a really interesting organization that involves a combination of both businesses and residents. And so it's, you know, you get uh, really good comments and very thoughtful uh, participation from people. So. I'm sure there have been lots of conversations with the MBTA, uh, not just about sort of coordination, but also about any infrastructure changes or sort of upgrades they may need to power lines, things like that. Just think that some of the other work that's happening in the area would be useful just to make sure they're... We agree. We're meeting with them regularly. Perfect. Uh, more than they would like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our base, our base instinct with the MBTA is to try and leave as much as we can of the below grade pieces alone mm -hmm. and use as much as we can of the existing footings that come down through the tunnels as okay. we can without disrupting anything. Um, obviously, we have to make a new cover to that portion of the Haymarket Station when we remove the garage because there's no, the garage is the cover for that. So, you know, we'll, we'll be working with them on the design of that. But we we want to be, uh, we, we want to try and be as, as little, dis causes little disruption to them, to the operations of Haymarket Station as we can. They'll I obviously think what be the Sharon's trying to say is that if the MBTA has upgrades to their infrastructure in this area, it needs to be coordinated and taken care yes, of. Yes, we agree. Right. We're prepared for that. Any other questions on the timeline before we talk about retention? Do you want to walk through the earth retention? The earth retention is yeah. the last. The one thing I, I missed, I'm sorry, John was pointing out, is there's a temporary earth retention uh, piece as well uh, for the uh, for the current piece. Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention those as well, but those I think are also on the agenda. So the, um, uh, there's a, uh, we need to install a, a, you know, a, a reinforced concrete wall, you know, with a, a slurry wall uh, piece. To support the excavation system and the slurry wall and the, the crane piece will all be located again on the on the building site. John, I think has a board for that. Two more. The crane. There'll be. A, we'll need two cranes to build this building, both at either ends of the site. We'll obviously be coordinating closely with you folks by the time we get to that to, to make sure that we do that correctly. And then there's a man hoist there on that side of it, um, on the Balco Street, the Balco Corner, closer to Brook Courthouse. <coughs> Yes, son of development. We're, I know we've got the demolition CMP all signed off. We're Thank good you. to go on that, but obviously we have a little work to do with the uh, actual building CMP. We agree with you on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's, you know, there's more work to be done. I think we've spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we we think about pedestrian access, automobile, all those things, and so we know we have to coordinate very closely with you. Right. We get that. Any other questions or comments? And we're done. Okay. Members of the public? All right. Uh, is two weeks enough time? Yeah. All right. See you on uh, the 28th. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, you Thank guys. You. Our we next. Walk faster. Yeah. We won't be late next time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our next item of new business is 111 Francis Street, Brooklyn Ave, Roxbury Widening and Relocation, Pedestrian Easement, Specific Repairs, Projection License, Earth Retention, earth retention License, on a set of petitions by Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Walter Armstrong, and I'm a senior vice president for capital facilities and engineering at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. This morning, uh, by Kevin Sullivan of Payette, Howard Moser of VHB, and James Christensen of GEI. Uh, we're all pleased and, in fact, thrilled to be here this morning to talk about our new inpatient building to serve critically ill patients. And it will be the first building on our campus in more than 20 years. So we're pretty pleased to, to talk about it. As you know, um, BIDMC is a not-for-profit 
academic medical center. We're part of the Harvard Medical School, and we have the three missions associated with an academic medical center. We're here to provide extraordinary care to patients, find cures for diseases, um, and, and also train the future clinical leaders in all uh, clinical professions, uh, both for Boston and actually for around the country. Um, we've been around for 120 years or more, uh, providing service to Boston residents, not only on our main campus in Longwood, uh, but also through a half dozen affiliated community health centers, uh, Fenway, Dimmick, Bowdoin Street, uh, South Cove. Uh, this building is going to serve our most critically ill patients uh, by providing single bedded uh, family friendly rooms, uh, something that's been a health care requirement since uh, 2010 and something we're pretty substantially short on. It will provide updated state of the art operating rooms and procedure rooms of a size that can accommodate the kinds of equipment and technology that are needed for those sorts of procedures. There are a lot of public benefits associated with this project. We articulated these at our, our BPDA uh, hearing. Uh, but first and foremost, our facilities to treat the critically ill. Um, there are over $22 million uh, in community health initiative benefits um, to be distributed locally. There are, of course, the housing and job linkage payments for the city. There are 400 construction jobs. There are 80 to 100 uh, permanent jobs at BIDMC, and I think we're among the first institutions in town to sign on to the $15 minimum wage, and we have a pretty aggressive workforce training program. If you come into our institution, we really do try to help people advance and to spend their careers uh, with us. The transportation improvements, public realm improvement, parks improvements, um, it is an environmentally uh, sustainable designed building. And we do think it's going to be an architecturally distinguished building as it sits on uh, the gateway as you come in into Longwood. Um, before Kevin starts, I guess I just want to extend my thanks to all the city agencies and departments and community groups that uh, participated in this long and successful development process. And I do think the project that we present uh, today really has benefited by everyone's input. So, I'll turn it over uh, to Kevin to get started des describing the site and the building. Uh, thank you, Walter. My name is Kevin Sullivan. I'm the uh, president of Payette, who is the architect for the project. And I first wanted to just go over just a couple facts and figures about the project. Walter remarked about sort of the new inpatient beds and um, ORs and, that, and, and the like. But one of the things to point, about, point out about the project is there will be no new parking that's added uh, from the project. And the gross square floor area is 325,000 uh, gross square feet, and it's uh, approximately 10 stories in height, about 178 feet. Uh, I'm going to turn this around and uh, just show you an axiometric that, really, that gives you a sense of the building's uh, size and scale. So the first thing you'll notice is that um, we have two. This is uh, Pilgrim Road and Francis Street here. Uh, the ambulance entrance, uh, not the patient entrance, but the ambulance entrance is going to be off of Pilgrim Road right here. And the new patient drop-off is going to be located off of Francis Street right here. So uh, we have a, a canopy right here and the new main entrance located there. Then up above those floors, you'll see this uh, yellow uh, zone here. This is a pedestrian connector that connects the building to the Rosenberg building and the far bridge. Um, so that's what this yellow piece is. And the blue uh, indicates all the different inpatient floors um, that are up above those levels, and there's a conference center on the top. We will be relocating the helipad uh, from the top of the Rosenberg building to uh, the new inpatient building. It's directly in the same flight path um, as the existing uh, layout. So I wanted to give you a sense of uh, how the building is uh, situated and organized. Uh, so uh, I want to go through the site plan and some of the architecture. So this is a view of the building from uh, Brookline Avenue. What I want to show you, just so I can show you what the building looks like, is I'm going to pull away the parking garage so you can see it. So 
So this is that same view with the parking garage removed. So you see the height of the building, but one of the most interesting things about the plan is the, in the, the added increase of landscape that actually goes around the entirety of the block. So we're adding street trees along Brookline Avenue, um, uh, additional street trees and green spaces uh, on Pilgrim, Pilgrim Road and on Francis Street. So really the whole idea of this block is a much greener block than it exists uh, presently. To go through a couple of these entry points that I talked about, uh, the new uh, patient entry for the new location building is right here, uh, right off of Francis Street with a drop off and a curb cut um, for this new patient drop off area. This bookends the site. It functions very much in the same way that the existing drop off works um, for the Rosenberg building where there's a canopy and a curb cut that uh, works for that. This will be uh, used as the new EV entrance uh, for new for EV patients going in there. It's actually going to be functioning like that uh, right away as part of the enabling work for construction. Um, and the ambulance entrance is right here. And the loading dock entry is off of Brookline Avenue, essentially where it is right now. Um, so the two things that exist on the site um, is really the EV parking lot and the existing loading dock. And the loading dock essentially remains in its present location in the new configuration. The question is, uh, so Mr. Mayor Hardy sort of waited on this, but so you're keeping the loading off of Brookline Ave rather than moving it to uh, Pilgrim or to Francis? Yes, okay. yes. So it, it was you know, a major concern with the design, and there's certain things in the design of the building that kind of prohibit it. We try to work around it, but I think that through the uh, TAPA agreement, when that loading dock will be accessible during what hours to maintain uh, peak hour traffic. So kind of not ideal, but it's something that they've worked with but us But you'll adhere to make sure the loading actually is happening at a time that doesn't sort of bottle up. It's as in your interest as well to make sure that Brookline Ave is accessible for ambulances, et cetera. Yes, there was extensive discussion yes. of this okay. during the course of the approval process. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to rehash that, I just want to make sure that it's an important point. In terms of uh, the architecture of the building, the base of the building um, is, is clad in a, a granite material. We're really uh, articulating the base almost like a garden wall, so this landscape and the base are very much entwined as an architectural expression. Um, as you go up higher, uh, there is a terracotta, a buff-colored terracotta that um, clads the remainder of the building. And you'll notice the uh, facade, the facade is faceted, and that's because the patient rooms are tuned to optimize the solar uh, performance and reduce glare. Um, and this gives it a very distinctive feature by scaling down uh, the mass and the bulk of the building, you know, giving it a fairly elegant profile. A couple other features on the building is, are the sky lobbies, so the main elevator lobbies for entering the inpatient floors are articulated in this zone um, here. And as you, uh, turn the building around and, and view it from uh, the riverway side. Uh, this is the Palmer building, the new inpatient building, and the Lowry building. I'm going to remove the Palmer building just so you can see what that looks like. And this, this reveals uh, the new patient drop-off, the new main lobby, the pedestrian connector, um, and the additional uh, inpatient rooms in the sky lobby. So you can see the building sort of is rather delicately scaled to articulate some of these elements and give it a rather uh, distinct personality. Um, the other thing of note here, this is the, the ambulance entrance here. Yes. So the existing Rosenberg building is here, and the new ambulance entrance is there. So now um, I'm going to sort of uh, turn it over to Howard from VHB, who's going to address your specific PIC actions. Before I start, are there any questions? I realize that this riverway is a DCR road, but that Pilgrim Road riverway crossing, are there any, you guys looking at any changes to the way in which that functions either for folks who are crossing from the riverway towards your property or? There are, there are no changes there. Okay. there. Um, we have made commitments on those two parcels, one we own, one that is city owned, to really improve the landscaping and try to make a more graceful connection to the, the riverway and the right. environment. And we have coordinated the uh, project with DCR, obtained some early permits from DCR, and continue the dialogues with them on the impacts. Um, so to uh, one point we haven't brought up, Pilgrim is a private way. Uh, 
So uh, to support the project further, we're asking the Public Improvement Commission to support uh, actions on uh, Francis Street and Brookline Avenue. Um, I'm going to start with the specific repairs. And as we propose some specific repairs, we'll be requesting some highway easements and pedestrian easements. But on Brookline Avenue, uh, as, as Kevin mentioned, we're proposing a number of street trees. We're also proposing a permeable pavement strip and a city standard sidewalk. Uh, this area is subject to an existing easement agreement, um, which we'll be restating, working with the city law department. But we're asking for approval for the street trees, relocated street light, and the city standard concrete. Um, we will be rebuilding the accessible ramps at the corner of Brookline and Francis, the reciprocal ramp on Francis and the reciprocal ramp on Brookline Avenue. Moving around the corner to Francis Street, which is a relatively narrow road compared to Brookline Avenue. Um, under existing conditions, uh, the Lowry Medical Office building has a small curbside drop-off zone. We've talked about the new entry for the new inpatient building. Uh, Kevin showed and, and discussed the ambulance entry. This is a critical link for ambulances and EMS to access the, the emergency department. So we are proposing to, cur to bump in drop-off zones on both sides of Francis Street to accommodate that. We've met with the uh, Commission for Personal Disabilities to review the widths of the sidewalks. Um, generous at eight or much greater on Francis. On this side, right in front of the vestibule, it gets reduced to a little under seven, but generally eight feet. Um, proposing the planters in the public way here. And uh, for specific repairs, it's pretty much functioning for a patient amenity drop off on both sides. Because we're proposing the curb modifications on both sides, we are requesting approval of um, easements. And because of the new nature of the geometry, we can both a highway easement for a small portion and a pedestrian easement on Francis Street. Those are all described on the plans provided for you in this nature. So Francis on both sides. The street, there's a highway easement, also a pedestrian easement shown. With all the geometries. We also mentioned the provision of the canopy, asking for permission on a license plan for a canopy on Francis Street to serve those patients at the newly provided drop-off area. So that's all provided on the license plan. And then uh, lastly, we're going to discuss temporary air contention. But before I turn it over to James from GI, I don't know if any questions on the street safety improvement. On the, the license, uh, the production license, how, how uh, far out does the canopy project right now? The canopy projects to approximately the existing curb line. There. And it's 14, I mean 15 feet minimum clearance. 15.4, I think, is known in the plan. Things are showing projecting beyond the curb line, which is the It's shown as projecting to the existing curb line, covering the proposed drop off. Right, you're moving the existing curb line in, so it'll be over basketball, not. Uh, that's right. Yeah, and that's right. hard stop for us. Yeah. I think we'd like to, to talk through the importance of that. Yeah, I mean, I, we think it's an important health care and patient care component. Um, obviously, we're trying to provide coverage for our patients as they are dropped off, just <coughs> protection from the elements. And we also follow in our designs the uh, federal and state guidelines for health care facilities. And, and under that, that's an important requirement for us to provide. And I think Kevin, in his uh, discussion, pointed out that when you go to the other side of the block, to the existing Rosenberg building, we provide that same protection for our patients. One thing which would be good to do between now and the public hearing, it would be great if you could share those guidelines. Uh, it is our standard to have that two thirds. Okay. So there's also, I mean, the, there's one thing covering the entirety of the cement concrete sidewalk, which is a different thing to push beyond that. Yeah, and so that's, that's right. not covered mm -hmm. for vehicles. There's, it's the, the line of the curb line is the first discussion, and then there's a second issue with it going over the road. Yeah. Have you applied for a building permit yet? I so we you. Sorry. We're, yep. we're in the process we have not of doing that. We've not applied yet. We've been doing no a series of briefing, briefings for ISD. I know you've been in a meeting. I was yeah. in one of the meetings. But <clears throat> so there's no application filed yet. We have not filed yet. They want to point out uh, there's a good, strong candidate to need a state variance for a building code uh, item, which would be the canopy would be affected by that. The two thirds is not only it's a, it's, a, it's a building code requirement. If you exceed the two thirds under projections in the ICC, 
which there is, there is no mass amendment for that, so that would be in the base ICC code, 2015. Do you know when you intend to apply for the building code? It's in I'm sorry, for a uh, building permit? March 5th. March 5th. All right. the, the problem will be you won't be able to get a variance for this item you find out, you the architect, if you do your research and you find out, that, yeah, you, you're probably going to need one, you'll, you'll have to wait to be denied by us Okay. as the vehicle to go before the state for the variance. If you want to okay. propose it, that's fine. If you propose something that's in compliance, then it won't come up at, at all. If it's something that you think is essential that uh, has to be done, <clears throat> that typically the, the variance process works is that we deny the permit for one reason or another, building code, zoning, and so forth, <clears throat> then, you, then you go from there. Okay. Just in terms of the, the context uh, as we work through this issue, um, understanding a little bit of the, the low-grade infrastructure on the canopy, there's an existing major duct bank uh, that's used by Eversource and Maytap to provide power, which is, which is there and will remain there and be accessible under this. Um, which pretty much takes the entirety of the portion over the public way that we're proposing to occupy the canopy with. So there's not a lot of vacant space for any any future work. It, on it, it's not it's not up to me. It's, yep. it's it's a black and white issue. So the proposed canopy will, will either be okay or won't. And, 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 and it is proposed to be internally drained in terms of that. To, to that effect. Out on the specific repair plan on the opposite side of Francis Street, you're Moving, proposing to move the curb line um, for the pickoff drop off. That's correct. Uh, but you're showing a catch basin basically at the old curb line. Uh, thanks, uh, Mike. The, um, we are proposing it there. The, the street has a very eccentric crown, it's not a traditional crown. And so to uh, achieve our ADA compliance from there, we're actually pitching the drop off to a gutter, which remains along the existing curb line. So where the existing curb line will be the low point? That will be the low point. It will be a kind of a, a gutter flow and also not put the, the gutter flow on the drainage for the patients getting out. So you're proposing a drop off pickup, not a valet. So it's not managed curb space. It's very likely it will be managed. It would be. I would strongly it would be, suggest it, we intend to have 24/7 valet operations. Right. Yeah. So that's our, our intent. Yeah. Right. One one thing I, I also didn't mention is on Pilbara, which is private uh, road, we are widening it to two-way to keep traffic off Brookline Avenue to the extent practical to decongest Brookline Avenue, part of the transportation mitigation. So with that, we'll just have James speak through the temporary. Sorry, one good thing for the pickup drop off. How do you, what's the calculation you use sort of on turnover time for uh, figuring out how wide of a pickup drop off location you would want on either side of the street? Is there sort of a standard you use for the typical sort of pickup drop off takes X long and you have this many trips or? In, in uh, hospital environments, you're, you're typically dealing with people with mobility challenges. So you try to, to take maximum extent that you can and it affords in the context of the street network. Here, we knew we didn't want people stopping too close to Brookline Avenue, so we tried to strike a balance for the length. Uh, if you visit many of Boston's hospitals, they, they suffer from a lack of that curbside zone, so you try to maximize it, but we don't want to have cars stopped at the intersection for the turning movement, so we kind of struck a balance of functionality. There's no metric to calculate that. One thing that we, we, again, try to maximize, we have a pinch point from a garage and some safe distances from crosswalks. So when you take those two setbacks, that results in what the opportunity zone would be. I appreciate that. I, I'm just wondering if there is, maybe, there is, maybe the answer is no, there's not a calculation for this, but if you know the typical pickup drop-off is X minutes, you know you have this many pickup drop-offs over the course of an hour, are you sizing this to the peak? Are you sizing this to something less? Like, are, are, we, are we creating a new curve line here that actually is going to meet your needs or are we going to still end up we, we believe so and when you start to talk about a valley environment you can improve the operations through the overall for, you know right. extra valley so when they, when they come in for the valet obviously we sit down with the valet company who are the parking experts yeah. they do have certain calculations which we basically dictate how many attendants they have on yeah. curb 
et cetera. So I think it'll just reinforce sort of the need to, to have that probably be managed just to be able oh, right. to sort of speed yeah. around. You would, you would want to be able to make this work as well. And, and as I expressed, it, this is a critical link to the EMS facility, so right. it has to work. Yep. Worth the time. Good morning, my name is James Christensen with GBI Consultants. I'm a technical engineer working with Beth uh, Israel on this project. Our excavation for this project is relatively shallow. There's only one level of uh, programmed uh, below grade space. Uh, the excavation support and the perimeter wall consists of a slurry wall with uh, load bearing elements. Uh, Excavation will generally be internally braced. Uh, however, due to some existing conditions uh, along Francis and Pilgrim, uh, we're proposing five temporary tiebacks at the corner of Francis and Pilgrim. And that will allow us to uh, accommodate some existing conditions and remove some uh, remnant foundations that would otherwise prevent us from doing a fully internally braced system. Uh, so existing foundations are the issue? Why you this? Uh, former Meisner building uh, occupied this uh, site. And on the temporary earth pension plan, we, we actually show the revenue foundations that we expect to encounter when excavated. Uh, the temporary tiebacks have considered the existing utilities in the street and the uh, existing Bethlehem uh, Real Deaconess uh, Bronze Tunnel, which runs along Pilgrim. Uh, the temporary tiebacks will be detentioned uh, during, uh, as the excavation is backfilled around that corner. Uh, and that's a brief summary of what we're proposing for the temporary detention. What is the bronze tunnel? That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bronze tunnel is a pedestrian utility and a utility tunnel that connects the Lowry building to uh, the Far building. Is that right? It's a number of buildings. Let me go. Going down, for instance, it's a, really, it's a sort of subterranean pedestrian yes. and utility <coughs> network. Pedestrian in the sense of you know restricted authorized personnel or anyone trying to get around. Uh, it's employees and primarily. How long is that been in place for? Oh, decades. The location when the building appeared? I believe so. Any questions on the earth protection lessons? On your time? Time is a couple. Right. Anything else you want to cover? No. All right. Between now and two weeks from now, if that works for you, if we can have a conversation about uh, the canopy, uh, that would be very important. Great. Thank you. Thank and, you. and Howard, uh, just sit down, Dave Flanagan, and yep. you talk about the CMP. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item of business is 50, 55 West 5th Street, B Street, South Boston, Earth Retention License on a petition by 55 W5 LLC. I'm with GTR. We're retained by West Fifth Development to help them with the uh, geotechnical portions of the project. And on this project, there's a um, going to be about a 12-foot cut, maybe some areas deeper as we pr approach towards the bridge, which crosses over the South Boston Bypass Road. In that area, it might be 20 feet deep or so. So we had to temporarily um, restrain or re retain the earth 
as they did their excavation for the foundations. And it required coming down West 5th Street and going over along B Street, and then it would daylight out as they slope up. And on the bypass road, it's at that, the bond of a footing is about the same level as the bypass road. So we looked at various alternatives for earth retention. Uh, some were sheeting, some were soldier piles and lagging. And then, of course, we looked at uh, soil nail wall. And we deemed that the soil nail wall was really the only viable solution for a couple reasons. One was it, it didn't have any vibration concerns compared to the sheeting or the soldier pile installation. Um, and then uh, putting in the soldier piles was a little concern for us because there's a, after you get down below the bottom of cut, there's a sand layer. And then below that is a clay layer. And I didn't think we could support the um, soldier piles or sheeting effectively in that material. Um, so it required putting soil, soil nail wall in there um, to get the earth retention. So you, you're looking at the plans now. So you can see where the soil nails project out. They're about 20 feet long, and they go into the streets. Yep. You had any success uh, TV in the sewer lines yet? Say that again? The pre-construction video for the sewer lines? Is that no, that has to be done. We put those notes on the plan at the request of BW, uh, Boston Water Sewer Commission. So that will be done before. Oh, it's done today. Okay. Yep, today, this morning. <laughs> Questions or comments on this? Construction management plan. Where do we stand with it? Our next item of new business is 159 Washington Street, Monastery Road in Brighton. Specific repair is on a petition by CCF, BB, SH, SSF, Washington 1, LLC. St. Gabriel's project at the Dane Torpy firm here in Boston. Uh, with me is John Sullivan with Cap and Cap and Forbes, the proponents and affiliate of CCF. Uh, we also have Steve Martirano and the Bowler engineering team, uh, well known to this commission, and Brian Beisel, Howard Dynuts. Uh, this is an unusually complex and interesting project. Uh, in a moment, John Sullivan will give you an overview of it. It involves significant new construction the substantial rehabilitation of some wonderful historic structures at the site which have been severely dilapidated over a number of decades and the preservation of some um, really remarkable uh, green space at the site. Um, this is the back side of the hill where St. Elizabeth's Hospital is in Brighton. The construction which is underway is taking place at the top of the hill are specific repairs proposals for the foot of the hill at that intersection. We've been working through that as construction is ongoing. From a regulatory standpoint, at the end of 2017, the BPDA approved the project and in quick succession, the Zone Commission uh, uh, adopted a plan, <coughs> plan development area for the site. So that is the regulatory backdrop. Uh, John Sullivan will introduce you to this project. Good morning, my name is John Sullivan. I'm with Cabot Cabin Forbes. So as Don mentioned, it's a very interesting and exciting project. Um, four new construction buildings. Um, 
uh, which surround uh, the St. Gabriel's Church and the St. Gabriel's Monastery, both of which closed down approximately 15 years ago and were left abandoned. The property was used as a, primarily as a parking lot for the hospital until we purchased it from uh, Student Health Care in 2015. Um, this, the center of the site really focuses around the church and monastery, the, the rehab of those two buildings. Uh, it's approximately $40 million of repairs. Um, the, the church will turn into the uh, community building for the center uh, for the entire development. Um, clubhouse space and amenities in, in, in public spaces are in the church. Uh, the monastery, which is a Boston Lake Park building, uh, is getting converted into 27 apartments uh, and common spaces. And then uh, the four new buildings, three of which are under construction now, um, surround uh, those buildings. Um, the schedule to open the first phase, which is the church monastery building one, uh, is September of 2019. Building two and three will open approximately the fall of 2020. And then building four, which um, is on the back side, uh, which is a home ownership building, uh, opens the year of 2020. <coughs> So uh, Steve will walk through the, uh, as part of our approvals, and um, we have um, proposed uh, or required improvements to the intersection of uh, Washington Street, our driveway, and Monastery Road. And Steve will walk through the best. Sure. Um, so just before I get up there, so uh, the driveway is down the bottom here, um, just, just off the page. So that's the intersection that during the Article 80 process, it was agreed that we would do improvements. To the intersection, predominantly uh, widening sidewalks, tighten up the lanes, give it a, give a little more structure. Uh, there's a lot of signal improvements that are, are, are part of the upgrade, and then obviously uh, uh, accessibility, new ramps, new crosswalks, things of that nature. Do you also own the driveway that's southeast of that driveway? Um, so. <laughs> This and, driveway is and, the project driveway, yep, and, the and this, this is the abutters driveway. That is, um, there is a separate project that's under review with the BPDA, but that is on a separate parcel of land. Okay. And, and we'll be able to see how that's handled in the okay. next slide. So as that project moves through the BPDA, their plan <coughs> is to close that driveway altogether, and their access will be off Fidelis Way. Okay. So we have like an interim condition, which you'll see here, that gets us to that point. So, uh, so this is our project driveway, and this is the, the other driveway that we were talking about. Um, so how, how it sets up, this is in the interim condition, it's a five-leg intersection. Every, every uh, driveway and or roadway is signalized. Um, and, and as Brian just mentioned, there's plants in here uh, to really make it easy when that, when that other project comes along to close that driveway up and make some very minor modifications to, to make it all work. So all the improvements we're talking about making stay in place with the exception of uh, the, the closing of that curb cut with that other project. Um, really what you get here is much wider sidewalks and, and that's really just to narrow that roadway down to, to a more appropriate width, which is it's a 40, 40 foot wide road in the, in the modified condition. So it's, it's very, very wide today. We're bringing it down to a 40 foot wide road uh, that takes traditional seven and eight foot wide sidewalks to 10 and as big as we're over 20 feet in this area here. But generally, we're, we're 10 to 15 foot wide uh, with a new sidewalk, which is great. So uh, creates opportunities to get some new street trees, bigger street trees. We're trying to preserve. There's some really mature, nice trees in the area that we're, we've made some efforts to preserve um, along here. Uh, but those tree pits get bigger and wider by moving the curb out. So again, healthier and, and trying to maintain as much of the existing trees as we can. New street trees come in uh, on this side where we're really pulling that curb line out. Uh, also have two bus stops um, that we're making room for. Again, the wider sidewalks are going to help the operations uh, of those bus facilities. And then we have uh, you know, the more traditional four-legged <coughs> Uh, with the crosswalks that are no longer apex uh, ramps, and we've got them uh, individually from these perpendicular crossings. So uh, we, we think we think they're they're good improvements to the intersection. Uh, it's essentially what we agreed during the Article 80 process, and we're really just here to formalize and, and detail it. So happy to answer any questions. So, I'm not any more mics remain, but the catch basin you have that's sort of floating out there. That would be in line with what the 
road would look like if the other driver was close? C correct. So we put it so when you put the new curb line in, there may be an adjustment to the rim to flush it up to the curb, but it's right where the structure should be. It should be a new catch basin, too. It says if the existing is in poor condition, then put a new one in. We'll put a new one in. You finalize this plan with uh, Don Burgess? Yes. So there's been some back and forth because of the, the extra leg on the intersection. Our hope is that Avalon is through their permitting process and has control of the property so that maybe we don't ever even have the signal where it has the extra leg. But if it is, they are responsible for removing the extra signal heads when they close the driveway. So Don has approved the design? Yes. All right. This is a steep driveway, right? Yes. So there's there's limited drainage infrastructure at the intersection. Is there any private drainage on site to handle drainage so it's just not all whooshing down the level? Right. Just just north of the page here, we have catch basins in the driveway. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we held them up a little bit higher is so we can get them you know, vertically or, or, or yeah gravity over onto an infiltration area. So they're not right at the mouth of the driveway, but it's just- So you do have a private system that's intercepting it off the hill? Correct. Great. Yep, treating and infiltrating. Well. Other questions or comments from Mr. Kirkland? Anything else you guys want to cover? Okay. Members of the public? All right, see you guys in two weeks. All right, pretty good, thank you. Our final Final item of new business is uh, Columbus Ave, Boston Proper, a grant of location on a petition by Selco Partnership doing business as Verizon Lines. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning. Uh, Michael Jimo for the petitioner. This is a, um, this is a, a fiber installation to serve a wireless node for Verizon Wireless. Uh, this was installed prior, at risk prior to the paving project with the, with the staff's consent, and we're in here to get uh, the approval. Th no one has indicated an interest in participating in this. Okay, uh, no, this is the question, you sort of walked through it, but so we, we just repaved this, you had talked to, uh, we had- Someone had talked to yeah, staff, exactly. yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we knew this was coming, so rather than have them come here and get wacky. They're in. Um, and so this is just a number Okay. Questions or comments? Members of the public? Um, let's see you guys in two weeks, comments? Come back in two weeks? We can come back in two weeks, yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved.